El Nino and La Nina can both have global impacts on weather, wildfires, ecosystems, and even economies. El Nino happens when sea surface temperatures are warmer off the west coast of South America, as you can see here. It can bring warmer weather to many, and that includes the Arctic. And in the past year, we've been in El Nino, we've seen this happen. So it makes sense that we have seen a decrease in our concentration of sea ice and an increase in both air temperature and sea surface temperatures. But now El Nino is actually over. So what does this mean as we get into our winter season when if we're transitioning to a La Nina pattern, maybe an opportunity to rebound as the northern hemisphere cools with the arrival of winter and the Arctic begins to freeze again, the ice surface increases at that time of year. However, this year, while well, that recovery might be laborious. The air temperature is warming, which of course is warming our oceans, and then in turn, we're losing sea ice as a result of that. And if you take a look at the surface air temperature pattern um, over the last many years, you can see that 2024 is actually in the second position to 2023. So it's second, but just by a little. So the same thing applies when we look at the world sea surface temperatures. 2024 is in the second position as far as the warmest on record, second to only 2023. When it comes to ocean temperatures in 2023, it broke records with surface water at its warmest ever. The situation lasted until July 2024, and since then, a slight decline has been observed, although overall the oceans remain abnormally warm. The other factor we need to acknowledge is that La Nina is something that we'll be transitioning to, and it could be short-lived. It might be of low intensity, so the global trend is one to watch over the coming months.